telling me. You want me to tell this man a story. What do you want? No. I mean, he's unconscious, isn't he? Yes. You didn't tell me he was unconscious. I mean, what kind of a story? What happened to you? We don't know. It was not a coma when they brought him here. He carried no papers. We even don't know his name. I remember. His name is Jack. What? Why don't you tell him the story? I mean, why me? We tried it. We can't. Jack is American. You are Colombo. He will recognize your voice. Every American knows your voice. Just talk to him. What do you say, Jack? I bet this is the most thing in life. Can you guess who I am? Peter Fall. Colombo. Lieutenant Colombo. The fellow in a raincoat. You know me, Jack. Just one more thing. I open the door, I come back in. Just one more thing. Jack, the old car, Colombo. Lieutenant Colombo, Jack. You don't know me. I mean, he's not even moving. Maybe you don't watch television. Perhaps your voice is not enough. You have to hit a nerve. It has to be a story told by your wonderful voice, emotionally, you know. Sonny, I don't know any stories. I can't even remember a joke. Come on. Your life must, must be full of stories. Jack needs a story with a happy ending. I'm going to tell you a story about a young man named Cotton Carroll. He was a television actor in New York, and uh, he had a girlfriend, Shirley. He was crazy about her. But he only took her out on Saturday nights. And this went on six months. Now, one Friday, he called her. He said, I'll see you tomorrow. And she said, no, I'll see you. He said, where? Well, she said, on TV, hung up. Oh. I remember he, he told me he was getting dressed at that time, and he, I guess he was shaving. And he went back in the bathroom, and now he's looking at himself in the mirror. And Jack had just hit him. He had to marry that girl. He loved her. It was clear to him. He went back to the phone, he dialed. No answer. But she was just there. So he waited five minutes. And he called again. No answer. He waited another 20 minutes again. No answer. And that night, he was going out with a, uh, an older friend. This was an elderly lady. Uh, she was a, a blind lady. Her name was Matilda. And she knew Shirley. So he told her what happened. He said, you know, Maddie, at 7 o'clock tonight, if Shirley had answered the phone, I would have asked her to get married. And Matilda said, call her right now. Jack, it was 12.30 at night. But he called. No answer. He got crazy. He just went wild and he got in his car. And Oh, I guess they were up on Upper Manhattan, and he drove all the way down the West Side Highway to Greenwich Village, and he rang a bell, no answer. Now the guy is banging on the door, nothing. In those days, Jack, the bars used to close at like 2 o'clock. So he thought, she's in the bar, and I wait, she'll come home. So he sat on a curb. And two o'clock came, and two o'clock went, and no Shirley. 
Now he's berserk. And he picks up some stones. He starts throwing them out of a window. And he started to yell. Somebody called the cops. And no the police response. came. And the police he's came. He's not interested. Nothing? Nothing. Uh, Jack, I'm still here. I'm just getting a glass of water. It should be a story about childhood. You have to touch some childhood memory. No, 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 continue. You're doing great. What happened then? Here's what happened, Jack. I got, Jack, I got mixed up. I told you about the wrong guy. I meant to tell you about a childhood friend of mine, Ray Singer. Ray was born in Jersey. And uh, what happened? He responded to New Jersey. I think he was raised in Jersey City. I'm not sure. It was either Newark, Trenton, or Hoboken. Or maybe Hackensack. I'll think of it, Jack. It will come to me in a minute. Coming, coming, coming. Um, Ray's father was a baseball player, Jack, and he played for the Jersey City Giants. And uh, all one day, Ray was looking out the living room window. He'd been sick at home that day, and the father honked the horn of the car, and he waited for Ray to come out. And gee, the kid got all excited because he thought maybe he was going to get a gift. And sure enough, his father opened that box, and there was a brand new, fresh baseball mitt. Nothing. He's not interested. Maybe he doesn't like sports. Uh, what happened, uh, Jack, was that this was a very uncomfortable moment in Ray's life because he really didn't like sports. But he liked good old. Well, I like the women, Jack. We all like the women. And, uh, gee, he liked Gloria. Gloria was older than he was. I mean, she was 17. And he only saw her once in a bathing suit, which it was a knockout. And, yeah, Jack, I mean, the kid was 13 years old, and he only wanted one thing in life. He wanted to see Gloria naked. So he bought a pair of binoculars. Now listen, oh, he was a crazy kid. He climbs this tree, and he's got the binoculars trained on Gloria's bedroom. He got there at 3.30 in the afternoon. He didn't want to take any chances. And Jack, it is now 10.30 at night. And he's been here seven hours. So far, no glory. Garnix. Try something else. Go, go, go. Uh, what happened, Jack, was that Gloria's family had moved and taken glory away, and he never saw glory again so he was sad and he went into his room he locked the door and he started playing music and he played his favorite record over and over again a little boy he had a favorite singer probably the greatest singer in the country at the time that was elvis presley no roy Orbison. Bus? who Roy Orbison. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>